자, 오늘은 Today I'm going to talk about Ostom implants at three prosthodontic systems. The contents of today, I'm going to talk about the classification, the characteristics and clinical application, and then I'm going to summarize. First, I'm going to look at the classification of different implanted prosthesis. As you know, implanted prosthesis can be divided into screw type, cement type, and ER type. There are hybrid fixed detachable bridge or implant over denture. There are other types of removable prosthesis, but today I'm going to talk about fixed prosthesis. First, screw type. Abutment and prosthesis is connected into one. Screw is used to connect the prosthesis with implant body. As for cementation type, abutment is connected, bonding agent is used, and ER type on abutment, prosthesis is cemented and using the screw, whole screw is removed and prosthesis is removed, the cement is removed and after that it is connected. First the screw type as shown. The abutment and prosthesis goes through casting process and becomes one piece. Screw is used to tighten the one piece abutment and prosthesis with the implant body. The screw hole is filled up using resin. Second, as for cementation type, implant abutment is connected and a bonding agent is used to cement crown on the abutment. As is with natural teeth, excess cement needs to be removed. Last but not least, the ER type. This is a combination of screw type and cementation type. Abutment is connected and prosthesis is bonded using cement. Screw hole is used to remove the screw. Cement is removed extra orally and as is in the screw type, the implant is tightened and then screw hole is filled up. Implant fixed prosthesis can be divided into three different types. Next, I'm going to talk about the different characteristics of each type of fixed prosthesis and the precautions that we need to take when applying them clinically. First, the screw type. This has many advantages. The biggest advantage is retrievability. Using the screw hole, the delivered prosthesis can be removed by removing the resin and if necessary it can be reconnected. This is a major plus in the case of complications such as fracture of prosthesis, a screw loosening or proximal contact loosening due to adjacent tooth mesial shift. It's a cement free, therefore complications due to cement can be avoided. Among the three prosthesis type, it requires the least amount of space. In limited vertical space, prosthesis can be provided with a screw type. TS system or US system TS system and US system uses this screw type and prosthesis can be delivered in limited space as shown. In addition to the numbers shown here, on top of screw head, we need to use materials like one seal 
to fill up the screw hole. In TS system and US system, at least 4.5 mm of space is required. If the amount of space is like this, this may be not enough for cementation type, but you can provide prosthesis using screw type. Let me show you a case. Number 37 is missing and the antagonist is extruded. Apart from the antagonist, the vertical space is insufficient. If we are to provide the implant restoration here due to limited space, if I were to provide cementation type, then there's going to be a high possibility of implant failure. In this case, there is less freedom of choice in terms of choosing between the three types. In this case, I normally use screw type, implant is placed, and when you choose prosthesis as shown, direct casted abutment or UCLA abutment is used. Through casting procedures, screw type prosthesis was provided. From platform to the antagonist was about 4.5 mm, therefore it was possible to provide screw type. The 4.5 mm distance is not from gingiva to antagonist, but it is from the implanted platform to the antagonist. If you look at the clinical image, there's much less space above the gingival margin. Even in this case, screw type prosthesis can be provided. This is the same patient after having provided the screw type prosthesis eight years later. The adjacent number six has mesially drifted, and there's a little bit of space between number six and seven and the patient complained of food impaction. In this case, repair is necessary. I removed the material in the screw hole. I removed the abutment screw and connected a coping screw with an impression coping. You can think of it as the same as pickup type impression coping. I made model and made request to the lab. The area with loosened contact can be solved by doing contact buildup. Repair is very easy. Because there is screw hole, you can freely remove the prosthesis and reconnect it. It's quite convenient in that end. In the case of need, repair can be done. When you remove the prosthesis, you can see the external type uh, platform and nicely healed the periodontal tissue. Because there's no cement, there's no gap due to cement between abutment and prosthesis, so therefore periodontally it's very healthy. This is after 12 years. Contact buildup was done around adjacent teeth and repair was done. However, continuous mesial drift occurred and there's a bit of gap at number 37. It looks very nice periodontally because it's a screw type, although the vertical space is limited. There's no concern of decementation or failure. The patient recall can be done with ease of mind. You don't need to worry about retrievability even if there's aesthetic problem or abutment fracture or screw loosening. You can remove the screw easily and it's very retrievable. Because of this, it gives the surgeon peace of mind. On the other hand, it does have disadvantages. The screw hole is the disadvantage. Aesthetically, it's unfavorable. Unless the screw hole comes out in the very accurate direction, it may be difficult to use in the anterior region. In terms of convenience, implant level impression needs to be taken, and in general, you can do buildup on zirconia abutment, but in most cases, direct cast abutment needs to be used, wax up and casting is required. It may be more cumbersome and technique sensitive in this era of digital dentistry.
When you provide screw type prosthesis, as the number of units increase, it becomes more technique sensitive. Unlike the cementation type and the clinical process involved with treating natural teeth, it is a bit more complicated. Compared with cementation type, it is more difficult to get passive fit. In the case of posterior screw type prosthesis, when you look at the screw hole before and after, even if you use filling that has similar color as prosthesis, it kind of shows. So if the patient is aesthetically sensitive, screw type prosthesis may not be a good choice. In the interior area, as shown in the image, if the screw hole does not come out in the cingulum area, screw type prosthesis is not recommended. Only when the screw hole comes out in the desired position can we do screw type prosthesis. This can be said as a downside. In terms of convenience, you need to have implant level impression. You need to have the master model with analog and casting procedure is necessary and these can be said as another disadvantage. Technique wise, the abutment and prosthesis are in one piece, so if the prosthesis goes in and if there is no screw resistance, and if the contact is perfect, it's great, but if it is not, if the contact is tight and if there is a resistance so when you tighten the screw, you need to understand whether it's resistance coming from the contact or from the connection area. Differentiating this requires technique and experience. You need to understand where to adjust to fix the problem. As the number of units increase, it becomes more technique sensitive and difficult. With more unit, the volume of casting increases and there can be a lot of casting shrinkage. Therefore, it may be very difficult to get perfect passive fit. As mentioned, it's quite technique sensitive. Personally, I use a screw type in the posterior area for multiple cases, two unit or three unit cases, for immediate loading or early loading. External type screw type prosthesis is fabricated. In internal type, if you make a split prosthesis using over two implants, then the tolerance for error goes down significantly. Therefore, I do not use internal type for splint screw type with over two implants. I just do it for single implants. When I use screw type, external type is better to get passive fit because it is not connected deep inside the implant. In posterior multiple case, I use external screw type implant. To do immediate loading, prosthesis is fabricated. This is after 14 years. This is maintained very stably in the clinical image as well as the x-ray image. In anterior region, as mentioned earlier, I use internal type implant. I do not recommend using screw type for tying two or more implants. In single unit implant from platform to cervical margin. Take note of the emergence profile. Subgingival contour and supragingival contour, it's convex and concave. To do this, a screw type is very favorable. In the transition zone, screw type is more favorable to make the desired emergence profile. Second is cement type. It has many advantages. There's no screw hole, so it's very aesthetic. The process involved in providing a prosthesis for natural tooth, it's the same for cementation type, so it's very convenient. Compared to screw type, it's easier to get passive fit. The compatibility of abutment and the suprastructure can be checked. In the case of screw type, if something doesn't really fit, you need to check whether the issue is with the connection or with adjacent teeth. The fit for abutment and suprastructure can be checked separately. There is more tolerance for error. 
In terms of convenience, the process is the same as that involved with natural tooth, so it's quite convenient. Cementation type's biggest advantage is that its aesthetic as shown, the screw hole, even if it comes towards the labial side or incisal edge in the interior zone, with cementation type you can get aesthetic results. In the posterior area, taking impression and if you make a cementation type prosthesis, you can get more aesthetic and natural looking prosthesis for patients who are more aesthetically sensitive. And delivery process is smooth. If you look at the fit of prosthesis, as for screw type, the process is quite complicated because you need to tighten, loosen, and adjust it. It can be quite tenacious and difficult. With cementation type, such process can be skipped. In screw type, at times it can be very difficult to find where the air is, but with cementation type, abutment is primarily connected with the implant and prosthesis is connected separately. They are separate. Therefore, it is easier to get passive fit. After abutment is connected, when you connect the cementation type of prosthesis, if the marginal fit comes out perfect at once, it will be great, but if not, after connecting abutment and fitting the cementation prosthesis, if the marginal fit is slightly off, with cementation type, you can adjust the inner surface of prosthesis or abutment. In the case of screw type, there's no way to overcome this. As a result, with cementation type, you can get better passive fit. There are disadvantages for cementation type because there's no screw hole the retrievability goes down. If there are many prosthodontic complications, if it comes off well, then it's fine, but at times, because it is irretrievable, it is changed to ER combination type. The problem with cementation type is that it has cement. If there's residual cement, it can be periodontally problematic, and because it is bonded, the retention can be a problem. The cementation can occur. In the case of screw type, if there are problems with the prosthesis, you can unscrew it, take a guide pin, and make a pickup impression, make model, and repair it at the lab. It's a very simple clinical process for repair. On the other hand, with cementation type, it may take a little bit more time and there's uncertainty. It may not come off. In that case, you need to make a screw hole and change it to ER type. This occurs quite frequently. Number 47, cementation type of prosthesis was provided after five years. Contact loosening occurred. For repair, I removed it. Impression coping was used for impression, and after that, I provided the prosthesis. And because of excess cement, I remove the cement. This process needs to be repeated again, therefore it can be time-consuming and it requires the effort and time on the part of the surgeon. This can be set as a disadvantage. In the case of cementation type and ER type, when you remove it, it doesn't matter if it's a multiple case, but in the case of single implant, at times there may be no way to remove it. Therefore, I design a wedge on the lingual side. This is so that ejector can be used at the same time to minimize discomfort on the part of the patient. At times, the lab makes a mistake or there can be excessive geometric form, it may require remake, therefore it can be quite cumbersome. In order to minimize patient discomfort and to secure retrievability, I form this kind of geometric form.
In the case of cementation type, custom apartment is made with supra margin or equigingival margin. In the interior area, there is no freedom as to where the screw hole can be. Therefore, in order to make aesthetic prosthesis, a cementation type restorations are made a lot in the posterior area. If the implanted position is is deviated from center of prosthesis or if the distance between implants are irregular, if it is difficult to form marginal form to make a good prosthesis with a stock abutment, I use one fit custom abutment. In the buccal side, in the posterior area, it's equigingival margin, and in the lingual side, as shown, it is suprajingival margin. Therefore, even if you provide cementation prosthesis, you can prevent complications related to excess cement. Third is ER type. It has both pros and cons of screw type and cementation type. The advantage of ER type is retrievability and passive fit. It's also convenient. It does use cement, but cement removal is more convenient because it is done extra orally. That is another plus. The downside is that because it has screw hole, there can be limitation in terms of aesthetics. Cement can be removed easily, but it isn't cement free. We do remove residual cement, but because of residual cement, there can be complications because it is bonded. There is also concern for decementation. This is the same as the cementation type. Among the three types, personally, I routinely use ER type foremost. If the implanted position is appropriate in the posterior area and if the screw hole is not completely deviated, I use custom abutment or stuck abutment to adjust the margin and do milling and provide an ER type or cesis. In the interior area, I try to secure a screw hole position as I would when I provide a screw type of prosthesis. Even if screw hole position is perfect so that screw type can be provided, I primarily provide ER type prosthesis because it has many advantages. In this case, it is a dentulous patient in the anterior area. Four implants were placed and eight unit fixed bridge was provided in the posterior area. RPD was used. Four implants were placed in number four, number two, and two, and four. Fixed prosthesis was planned and fabricated. In number two and two, it was okay, but in number four and four, the screw hole was positioned where the rest of RPD was positioned. Therefore, in this case, in number four and four, I decided to do cementation type, and in number two and two, I used ER type. At times, if it is called for, I intermix these two methods as well. I've talked about three types of implanted prosthesis. To summarize, screw type. Abutment and prosthesis are joined in one and it is screwed. When vertical space is very limited, it can be very useful. However, it can be difficult to get to passive fit. In the case of cementation type, a prosthesis is fabricated in the same way as you would with natural tooth. It is highly aesthetic. In terms of convenience, the clinical process is very similar to that of natural tooth, so it's quite convenient. However, cement is a problem. The key is to remove excess cement. My favorite, ER combination type. 
You can get retrievability at the same time, be free of cement-related problems. However, it has a screw hole, therefore, in aesthetically sensitive cases, there can be limitations in anterior cases. As for cementation type, there are concerns for decementation. If it is too short, if the retention is low, then ER type may not be most optimum choice. There is no one-size-fits-all prosthesis type. You need to use different types of prosthesis depending on the situation. Screw type can be preferred in the case of posterior multiple external implants, and a cementation type can be preferred when patients are more aesthetically sensitive. They can be used as both posterior and anterior prosthesis. In general, you can use ER type because it is convenient and the fabrication of prosthesis is easy. Depending on the given situation, you can utilize different types. Today I've talked about three types of implant prosthesis that are available in Austin Implant. I hope this was of help to you. Please keep in mind the pros and cons of the three implant prosthesis types and utilize them in your clinical practice. I hope this was of help to you. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you for watching.